All right, well, now we have a uh, equation in one unknown, so we can use algebra to solve. So we have to do the calculations. Negative 490 minus 1960 plus 2225. And we end up with the magnitude of HY minus 225 equals 0. All right, and then rearranging again, we get that the magnitude of HY equals 2 to 5 newtons. All right, uh, so now we've really finished off the problem because not only have we found the tension force, uh, we know that the tension force is 4,900 newtons. Now we've also found uh, the hinge forces. Uh, the hinge forces were 225 newtons uh, up and uh, the x component was uh, 4,366 newtons uh, to the right. A couple other comments to make. Uh, remember that originally it wasn't really clear what the directions of hinge force x and hinge force y would be. Now, actually, you can pretty much figure out that hinge force x has to be to the right because it has to cancel out tension force x, which is to the left. But it wasn't really obvious whether hinge force Y would be up or down, uh, because some of the other forces were down, like the weights, and one of the other forces was up, like the tension force Y. So it wasn't clear whether hinge force Y was going to have to be up or down to keep the object static. And the students I was working with just guessed that hinge force Y would be up. The students I was working with took a guess, and they guessed that hinge force Y would be up. Uh, but their guess could have been wrong, how can they tell whether their guess comes out right or wrong? Uh, well, going back here, remember that since we guessed that hinge force Y was up, we put in a plus sign here to indicate that sign. And then I put a dot here to indicate that then this variable just stands for the magnitude of hinge force Y. Uh, now, notice that mathematically here, this variable came out to be positive. Uh, and that really has to be the case because it stands for a magnitude. And magnitudes have to be positive. Now, then... What would have happened if our guess had been wrong? What would have happened if the hinge force was really down, even though we were guessing that it was up? Uh, well, then we would go ahead and put the positive sign in, because we're guessing that it's up. But then this variable would, would have come out to be a negative number, because our guess was wrong. And then we would say to ourselves, well, wait a second. Um, this variable came out to be a negative number. Uh, but we know that doesn't make sense, because this variable is supposed to stand for a magnitude. So that must mean that our original guess was wrong in the first place. Uh, so we had originally guessed that uh, hinge force Y, uh, so I'll just write this down. Uh, so if we had originally guessed that hinge force Y um, was a downward force, uh, then we, when we tried to figure out the magnitude of hinge force Y, it would have come out to be a negative number. And we would know that doesn't make sense because magnitudes can't be negative. Uh, and then we would say, gee, I, I guess our guess was wrong in uh, the first place. Uh, it turns out hinge force Y really is up. Now, in this case, we didn't have to worry about that because the magnitude came out to be a positive number, uh, which is the way it should be. So that just confirms that our original uh, decision was right. Maybe I'll, I'll just write this down. If we had guessed that hinge force Y was a downward force, then the equation we would have written would have looked like this. If we had been guessing that hinge force y was down, then we would have put a negative sign in front of the variable to indicate that we're guessing it's a downward force. And again, I would put a dot on top of the variable to indicate that now that we've already put in the sign in the equation, the variable just stands for the magnitude of hinge force y. So you can see these two equations are the same, except um, that uh, here we were guessing that hinge force y was positive, and here we're guessing that hinge force y is negative. But if you had cranked out the math here, you would have gotten...
negative inch force y minus 225 uh, equals 0, uh, which would give you negative hinge force y equals 225, and multiply both sides by negative 1. So that would have given you that the magnitude of hinge force y is negative 225. So with this guess, we would have gotten that the magnitude of hinge force y is negative 225. And then hopefully we would say to ourselves, well, wait a second, this doesn't make sense. This variable was supposed to stand for a magnitude. We've already put in the sign. If this variable stands for a magnitude, it should not come out algebraically to be a negative number. A magnitude has to come out to be a positive number. Uh, what does it mean that we got something that doesn't make sense? It must mean that our original guess was wrong. So this would alert us that we were wrong to guess that hinge force y was down, uh, and then we would fix that and say, gee, I guess hinge force y is really up. All right, so that's something that you oftentimes have to do on statics problems. Sometimes it's not clear up front what the direction is of some of the forces. Uh, so one way to handle that is just to take a guess as to what the direction of the forces are, is. Uh, and then if you, uh, if you do the algebra and you find that the magnitude of that force is coming out negative, that just is uh, a, 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 um, an alert to tell you that uh, your guess was incorrect and that the, the, the truth is the reverse of your original guess. All right, so all of this down here was, again, just what would have happened if we had made the wrong guess that hinge force y was down. Um, as it happened, uh, the students I was working with had, had made the correct guess that hinge force y was up. So the magnitude came out to be a positive number, which is the way it should be and that reassured us that our original guess was correct. Uh, let me just emphasize one more time. Why, did, why was it easiest first to start with the torque equation here? It was easiest first to start with the torque equation. The main reason it was easiest was because there was no torque from the hinge forces. It was easiest to start with the torque equation because there was no torque from the hinge forces because they're being applied at the pivot. Um, but make sure that you recognize that even though the torque from the hinge forces was zero, that doesn't mean there wasn't any force from the hinge forces. There was definitely a force. There were two. There were forces from the hinge, hinge force X and hinge force Y. We worked out that hinge force Y is 225 newtons up, and we worked out that hinge force X was 4366 uh, newtons to the right. There were definitely forces from the hinge. There was just no torque from the hinge because it's being applied at the pivot. And as a result, um, the simplest of the equations was the net torque equation. So it was best to use the net torque equation first, and then we went through and used uh, the two net force equations. Uh, and again, as I discussed with the students, um, it was convenient here to choose uh, this point on the left as the pivot because that did give us um, zero torque from the hinge forces. Because this is a statics problem and the object isn't really rotating, we can choose any point we want to be the pivot point.